Hey guys, it's Sevi and we have another video about the new 1.6 Elemental Mastery buff because it turns out there's a lot more to Swirl than I initially thought. Now, I got some comments on my previous video that Swirl can actually proc, vaporize, and melt and that because Swirl is now more powerful, those proc reactions by Swirl are also more powerful. Now this was the first time I'd ever heard about this, so I did want to test it with my own characters, and that's what we're going to do in this video. We'll be showing you how to use Swirl to proc Vaporize and Melt, and then we'll go over the computations and equations involved so that you can compute for your own damage afterwards. So the first thing we did was to try to find Sucrose's base Swirl damage. So we basically removed all her elemental mastery, we didn't use Viridescent Venner to see the incoming Swirl damage that she can cause. However, you have to know that the damage you see here, which is 581, is not the raw Swirl damage because Swirl damage takes into account the elemental resistance of the enemy but not the defense. So if we're going to compute for the actual raw swirl damage that sucrose can cause, we're going to use this formula on the Genshin wiki and manipulate it so that we can compute for the raw damage. So given that the enemy's resistance is 10%, taking the resistance multiplier which is 90%, and if we divide the damage we see, 581, by 0.9, what we get is 645. So that becomes our base scroll damage for Sucrose level 80 with 0 EM. And again, this is higher than the 1.5 swirl base damage at level 80, which is 568. So before we get into the tests, here is my Sucrose's best EM build because unfortunately I only have an EM Sans. I don't really have an EM Goblet and Circlet yet. So her EM amounts up to 474, and she's on 4-piece VV. She's Constellation 5, but that doesn't affect the tests at all, and neither do her passive talents. So we're really basing this off her level and her elemental mastery. And if you check the percent increase from the 474 elemental mastery on her swirl, it comes out at 306.6%. So if, like me, you didn't know that Swirl could actually proc, melt, and vaporize, here's how it works. On the field, you need two existing elements that aren't interacting with each other. The best example of this, which we'll be using in our tests, would be a Hilitro holding a torch or a Blazing Axe Mitotro with his Blazing Axe. So those are actually sources of Pyro. And then you would apply Hydro or Cryo, whichever one you're reacting with, and then you use Swirl to transfer the Pyro on the Torch or the Axe onto the enemy. So when that scattered Pyro meets the element that the enemy is affected by, that's what procs the Melt or Vape reaction. So the first thing we tested out was if this could be done by an environmental application of pyro. The example here is burning grass. So we wanted to find out if we could proc melt if the pyro was coming from grass instead of something that the enemy was holding. So we did this by setting the grass on fire using amber and then applying cryo to the Ruin Guard with Diona, and then putting them near each other and then swirling it together to see if it would proc a reaction, and it didn't. And we tried this several times and none of them proc a reaction, so conclusively it didn't. So next we tried it with those mobs that are holding sources of elements themselves. So we tried it on this unsuspecting hilly troll who ran toward us without any idea that he was going to become our test subject and thankfully it procced melt. However, there were three different numbers that came out of this whole process, so we're gonna try to break it down for you. The green number is Sucrose's animal damage from her skill, the blue number is the swirled cryo damage, and that red number is the melt damage procced by pyro through the swirling. So you can see that the animal damage, the swirl, and the melt damage all happen at the same time, and the melt damage is the highest number among them because melt is an amplifying reaction and the numbers are always big. Next we tried it on multiple enemies and there were a lot 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 of numbers that came out so again let's break this down. 
So starting from the top, we again have the animal skill damage as a green number at 2,883 and 2,868. And then we have a melt via swirl damage, which is 9,247, which is actually the same as what we saw with the single enemy. Now take note that there's only one instance of this because there was only one hilly churl among this crowd that was holding a source of pyro, which was his torch. So he was the only one who was affected by melt via the swirl damage. And then we have the cryo swirl again, which is at 3468, which was the same as the single hilly churl enemy. And then we have this 2714 damage, which is the damage you get from spreading cryo or pyro with swirl. So Swirl does scatter elements like we said before, and this ends up having its own individual damage. Next, we tested proccing a vaporized reaction using Swirl, and it did work in the same way. But since Pyro is still the one that was swirled and was the one that ends up proccing the vape reaction, obviously, since it's a reverse vaporize, you get a lower damage number from the reaction, coming out at 6,900 something. Then we wanted to check if this reaction could crit, since melt and vape by themselves can crit, but transformative reactions don't. So we did this by feeding sucrose with um, crit food and giving her a crit rate circlet and we tried and tried and tried several times okay by probability we should have gotten a crit if it did exist but we didn't so either mihoyo was really fooling us with <laughs> giving us no crit hits or it just doesn't exist if in your experience this kind of reaction has critted, please comment down below. Now let's go over the computations involved here and how we arrived at all these numbers and how you can arrive at them too. So when we're talking about swirl, we have to remember that the only things it considers are the base swirl damage, which is dependent on the character's level, the elemental mastery of the character, any artifact set bonuses, and the resistance of the enemy. So if we break that down, we have the base swirl damage here, we have the percent bonus from the elemental mastery, which you'll be able to see on the character stats screen, and then you have the 60% bonus from the Viridescent Venerer, which gives you a 60% swirl damage bonus. And then you have the resistance multiplier, but this accounts for the lowered elemental resistance from Veridescent Venerer. Veridescent Venerer actually applies the resistance debuff before the damage is dealt, which means that it is applicable to this equation. Now before we move on, remember that the transformative elemental mastery bonus is a bonus, which means it adds on to the base swirl damage already. That's why in our equation we have an added 100%, then we add the transformative elemental bonus percent, and then we add the 60% from the Veridescent Venerer. Now if we put all those in numbers, we have 645 times all those percent bonuses put together, which we translated to decimal form and then the resistance multiplier was Viridescent Venerer. Now the resistance multiplier, you can find its equation on the Genshin Wiki because it's a bit complicated, but all in all, when you multiply it, you get 3457, which is close to the empirical value that we got. Now let's look at the scattered elemental damage, which is important because that's how we get to the melt damage. It's pretty much the same equation as the swirl damage, but we are not applying the Viridescent Venerer resistance because that resistance only gets applied to one of the enemies that got a cryo debuff and that cryo debuff got swirled. So essentially, we're taking the base swirl damage again, we're taking the elemental mastery bonus and the 60% bonus from the Viridescent Venerer, and then we're taking the regular enemy resistance multiplier, which is 0.9. Now, if we put those all into numbers, translate the percentages into decimals again, what we get is 2,670, which is, again, pretty close to our empirical value. Now comes the melt part of the equation. The swirl pyroprocked melt damage is determined by the scattered elemental damage, which ends up kind of being the pyro damage that applies or procs the whole reaction. So you take that scattered elemental damage you take the amplifying elemental mastery bonus and then you multiply it by the melt multiplier 
So considering that at 474 elemental mastery, the melt percent bonus becomes around 70%, and that the melt multiplier when propped by pyro is 2, or double, translating all that into decimal places, we get 2714 times 1.7 times 2, which brings around 9227, which is once again quite close to our empirical value. And you can pretty much apply the same equation with vaporize, except that instead of 2 being the multiplier, you use 1.5. So now that we know that swirl can proc, melt, and vaporize, what do we do with this information? I think one positive that we can take away from this is that by buffing swirl, vaporize and melt also, incidentally, got kind of buffed as well. But because it's so hard to proc consistently on the battlefield, and there are a lot of factors that come into play, it gets very difficult to apply. In a way, this shows that transformative reactions have an advantage because you can very much proc other transformative reactions with swirl. But in the case of transformative reactions, the order of procking doesn't really matter. So even though the amplifying reactions and pyro are still pretty OP, the fact that you can use swirl to proc transformative reactions and amplifying reactions with multipliers and multipliers just makes swirl all the more powerful. I'm hoping that when it comes to Kazuha, and given that the teaser footage showed his ultimate having such a wide AoE, I'm hoping that it's going to be easier to manipulate amplifying and transformative reactions using his swirl procking. However, I have a feeling I won't really know until I actually get to play him or we get to see him on the battlefield. So if you learned something new from this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. We upload videos quite regularly, both gameplay videos and meta videos like this one. I also stream on Twitch three times a week, so my links are down below. And this was a confusing video, so if you have any input or questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I personally am so excited to see Kazuha's performance, especially with all that EM stacking and the reaction stacking and stuff. So let's just wait and see. Thank you everybody for watching and take care and I'll see you soon. Bye!